liars. But it was Shut like up. A, a light You're liars. was shining on me all the time, a spotlight. And I like to be the center of attention. <laughs> and I give away my secrets before anyone can tell them. But I was irresistible, and I represented shame, and I knew what everybody's face looked like, contorted with rage. It was kind of a, kind of a privilege, I guess, see, secret knowledge in high school. Privilege. North Hundred and Regional High School in Annandale, New Jersey. Don't send your children there. <laughs> boys, especially boys, were eager to walk up to me and show me their out of control rage. It, it wasn't physical abuse exactly. I mean, I mean, I had a long scar. We're not going to get the creepy uncle story. Yeah, it's Our, like, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do they leave everything like? Not that like I want to sit here and go over those disgusting details, but it's like that. Except for Milo, actually. Like, he was the only one that I know of in the media who fucking actually explored that. But then he got punished by multiple sides, you know. But he was creepy and weird for other reasons and a grifter. So <laughs> he was funny for a time, but not productive overall, I don't think. Macrame scarf that my mother made. And it dragged nearly to the ground. And kids would grab me in the hall and push me up against the lockers and wrap a scarf around my neck and choke me and call me a faggot. But, but nobody punched me. They threw chairs at me in the cafeteria, but the scary thing, scary because it was such an intimate thing, was guys I didn't even know, whose names I couldn't tell you now, would walk up to me and scream at me with their fists clenched and their faces red as if their veins were... <laughs> Yo, chads. <laughs> and, and, and I was... I caused it. I made, them, I made them angry. It was my fault. He might have. He might have been like, oh my god, white people, shut up and listen to people of color. You know, I'm not asking you to hold me. I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying this is the diagnosis. I was the thing that made them... You know, much later in New York City for a while, all my friends were therapists. <laughs> Shrinks, and they were all forever getting in touch with their anger. And, and, and they'd say, I don't think you're in touch with your anger. And I was like, oh, I've been in touch with anger. <laughs> Oh, yeah, speaking of that, look at look at how angry and psychotic and satanic and Moloch this dude is. You can't keep calling yourself pro-life when the end result, indeed goal, of your movement is that women will die getting illegal abortions. The pro-life movement is a death cult. Let them call it what it is. It's anti-life. Dude, that is the most bullshit. I mean, angry. Dude's definitely in touch with his anger, okay? In an extremely destructive way. I mean, the guy's clearly... You know, saying that the goal is to kill women in back alley, uh, what is he saying, back alley, like, coat hanger abortions, but that's always a canard, that's always been a canard. Uh, also, same with abortion clinic bombings, uh, oh, my abortion clinic bombings, like, that's always been a canard, that's happened like eight times, okay? What he's really trying to do is just, eat, well, be really angry and evil, but also just take attention away from the fact that millions of babies are killed every year like and <clears throat> he's trying to act like the exception you know the back alley abortion he's gonna he's trying to act like millions of those are gonna start happening no i think if you were to ban it i think that most women would just opt to give birth to the kid right i think that uh you know they they yeah and killing millions of babies isn't right it's it, that's a that's the satanic moloch death cult it's like everything is projection and lying with these people with these oy vey people, you know? But it gets worse. <laughs> I'm the source of anger. It's like, they tell you, and, and, like, and right. I, I knew I caused it, and, and I, I didn't know why, and it, and it happened to me all the time, all day long. Because you're super stoked on killing babies and, like, genital mutilation and gender transitioning and bathhouses and disease and frilly, creepy, creepazoid behavior. Like, that. that's probably the why. The time I got on the school bus at 8.30 in the morning. Until I got off the late bus after play practice at 6.30 at night. One or five or 12 or 20 people were following me around and calling me a faggot. And, and, and I was so ashamed. And, and thank God no one ever asked me. If, if any adult had ever actually asked me how I felt about being called a fag all day long, I would have been, oh my God, I would have died. And the, the problem was, the problem was, mostly, even in high school, I was still a girl. In high school, the, the choir director, I'll call him, I'll call him Mr. Disney, um, <laughs> he, told me, he told me in front of everyone, he inter interrupted class. Over 200,000 couples every year can't adopt babies in the U.S. because of abortion. They have to go to other countries. Dang, I didn't know that. And, and so, but these guys, guys like this are going to complain about, oh, well, my gay adoption, oh, my God. It's like as if that's actually 
you know, preventing gay adoption as if that's what's preventing, you know, kids from getting to loving homes. I mean, dude, I wouldn't want to wish that sort of family situation on a random fucking unfortunate kid. That's insane. That's, I mean, that's an unhealthy society. That's an unhealthy healthy society where priorities in many different circles are just out of whack. Like, we need to make sure that gay adoption and abortion are at the top of our list. It's like, no, how about banning those no. things? Or, or, or if not banning, like severely limiting those things. In a low resonant voice, you walk like a girl. <laughs> he was a choir director, but it wasn't choir. It was the performing arts team. Or high school. He's never heard the phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. I, I think he's just straight up lying because he knows that it's lucrative. It's monetarily lucrative, but it's also they gain a sense of influence or power if if they complain about this stuff. You know, the more they complain about this stuff, it was overcrowded that's really in what it is. Five and students Agenda were going through the teams, pushing. which basically meant that fifty of us met each day in the choir room, waiting for our teachers to decide what to do with us. And one thing they decided one day was to fix my walk. Like <laughs> a girl, Mr. Disney says, looking at me. Everyone laughs. I laugh. Mr. Disney is what you picture when you hear the words tall, dark, and handsome. He was maybe 30 years old and... and they said he, has, he said they had to fix his walk, like much like they would have tried to fix left-handedness. Pretty based. Ooh, dude, and, and funny and smart, <laughs> and younger than most of my other teachers, and cool. You could tell he probably once smoked pot. And I guess I had a crush on him, and, and he said, Really? You do? And, and I nod. I'm like, I'm like, I know, I know. I, I, help me, help me. Please help me not be a girl. And he turns to the room and says, Somebody get up and show him how he walks. Everybody I know is in this room. My, my best girlfriends, my best boyfriends, my brother, my brother's girlfriend, 40 of us maybe. It's, it's, it's the drama club, basically, the music and drama club. Ugh. Everybody there is probably a fag, but I'm the faggot of all fags, and a bunch of guys raise their hands. Queen fire. Hands, and they're like, oh, let, let, let me do his walk. Let me do his walk. Yeah, I'll do his walk. Call on me. <clears throat> and Mr. Disney picks Mike. Mike, who's a greaser. I'm not saying I don't mock people too. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a vicious mocker. So dude was like Pony Boy Curtis or Soda Pop or something. You know, high school is hell. The greasers come from Califon, and it isn't clear that they ever got over Elvis. Mike's hair is, is big in front and slicked into a duck's ass in back. For spring concert last year, he wore a leisure suit. And yeah, greaser, you know, <clears throat> the outsiders like 2-Bit, two 2-Bit, two Pony Boy, Soda Pop, Dally, you know. Well, the Fonz. There, there you go. That's a grease. Turned to Mike and sang Fonzie. in a loud, flat voice. Does anyone really know what time it is? The Chicago song. It's probably the he 60s, 70s, 80s. Yeah. Time. If he'd waited five years, he'd have a sitcom. But it's 1970. Yeah, it sounds like a gay oppression fantasy. It sounds like some village people. Like, yeah. <laughs> Just and like, New Jersey, and he goes to the front. Of and the room. and by the way, uh, <clears throat> I mentioned this at the beginning. Like, look at look at. They say right here on this Queen's profile. His writing has appeared in several anthologies, including Between Men, Original Fiction, and Today's Best Gay Writers, and Vital Signs, Essential AIDS Fiction. So he writes fiction about, you know, he probably writes like fan fiction and like gay porno, like Woman walks fantasies. Back and forth, doing Creepy, me, dude. earnestly and kind of sweetly, while my friends call out abuse. Swish your hips, they say. Dangle your wrist, they're telling him. Mr. Disney isn't happy. And that's not it, he says. And Mike sits down, and Mr. Disney takes over. It's creepazoid, dude. He comes up to like me and it. says, you're not Cher. Putting his hand on my shoulder. He's not mocking. He, he doesn't want me get, to, get, to get hurt. I'm, be, I'm being protected. Don't be Cher because you're not, he says. In, in, the, in the same tone in which like white liberals go to the inner city and tell the kids that there's somebody. You're, <laughs> you're not Cher. They laugh because they know in the back of their minds that that's a lie. The hashtag bleak excellence. Did you hear that? You go to the, these white liberals, go to the cities and say, you're someone. It's like, then they immediately laugh at that prospect because they know that that white or fellow white liberal who says that is completely full of shit on multiple levels. Like, they don't believe it themselves and they're using that idiocy for more of the, you know, more of the aforementioned power and influence and money. It's like... Really cynical and gross. <laughs> Cher walks like this, he tells me. I'm the only, I think, the only group of people that don't understand that at this point are the white baby boomer conservatives. Like they are still stuck in this MLK, like racial egalitarian. Like they earnestly, one hundred percent, believe that that they would, st you know, cower in it like a majority white enclave. They wouldn't 
necessarily go into the cities like the liberals and, and lie and rabble rouse. They would lie from the safety of like, you know, a white enclave and uh, say, I don't see race, oh, content of character, not color of skin. You know, that sort of nonsense. But so both sides effectively believe in, the, or multiple sides believe in the Blake excellence, oh, bigotry of low expectations. Well, the conservatives believe that more so, but the liberals, they just, they're like, oh, ha ha, you know, oh, black excellence, right? They, I think, I don't think a single one of them actually believes it. So do you. They're just using it. They're using like, oh yeah, oh, well, what an excellent mural you painted in the crumbling ghetto, Jamal. Wow. Oh, wow. You're a break dancer. Oh, hip hop. Wow. Yeah, vote Democrat. Yeah. He says it one flail. So That's what really. it is. <laughs> and then he walks back and forth across the front of the choir room in front of all my friends and swings his hips from side to side and flaps his arms and, arms and waddles like he's part duck, part Mae West. And nobody laughs. We're stunned by the likeness. And, and then he gets me in front of the room and he says, no, you do it. And so I walk. Get I go from one side of the big room to the other, from the big double doors to the, to the grand piano and back twice. <laughs> Help him out, people, Mr. Disney says. What's he doing wrong? Tell him. And my friends tell me. Where do we begin? I walk back and forth while they make suggestions. They tell me to drop my arms and, and square my hips. After a while, Mr. Disney stops them, and he looks at me and says, watch me. This is how a man walks. And, and he does a big circle around the room. It's a tiered and carpeted classroom. And he goes up one side and across the back. And You're going to walk like a prowling animal, dude. That's how, <laughs> that's how, an, that's how a man walks. Sure. On the other side, showing me how to walk. And then he says, now follow me. And again, he circles the room. And I go behind him trying to do what he does. And we keep circling the room until the bell rings and it's time to go. After that, Mr. Disney and some other teachers institute like a... A John Weir reclamation project. They, they form a, a committee wow, to save me from a being a girl. Apparently I lisp, so Dan they send me Ratter. to the speech therapist. Wait, they can come you out of gym that? class, thank God. Can you link that video? They send me instead to the weight room, <laughs> where I have to ask the members of the football team to spot me. And, and I mean, would you send your Jewish kid to Goebbels for moral support? Uh, yes. I go for cut talk to the head guidance counselor who happens also to be, also to be the, the football coach. And, and I see the school psychologist in a little house made of wood that the shop kids built next to the gym. The speech therapist, Mrs. Reed, sits across from me at her, at her desk and, and tries to help me make a better, make a better S. She's got, a, <laughs> she's got a picture book and she spins it around to face me, points at the page. Yeah, that's my favorite part. They're upset about the AIDS epidemic. Well, we're upset that you insist on having creepy, like, bathhouse scenes in every major city, which is the reason for the... Uh, what is it? Tuberculosis and AIDS stuff. Um, those are the, I mean, that's like just how you get it, but society being homophobic is, is the blame here. Like that was one of the biggest gaslighting abuse jobs done by our friends with the tea cozy hats, the small hats. Um, the, Oh, you don't like this creepazoid subculture in your city. Oh, well you're, we have a word for that. It's homophobic. It's like, oh, you don't like um, Mr., you know, one Jeffrey Dahmer having a hunting grounds to do what he did, like, unassailed or, uh, you know, un uninterfered with for fucking years, probably because of the nature of, like, the like the seedy nature of the bathhouse sort of gay nightlife scene. Like, well, we have a word for you. You're homophobic. It's just a gaslighting, brain scrambling, you know, Page. con What's job. That? Done by the small I say, hats. The snake. Tongue behind your teeth, she says, wiggling her tongue across her lips and, and drawing it to the roof of her mouth. I do the same. We're darting our tongues like serpents. Yeah, and please look that up and picture. link it in the chat or something. Sandwich. If you can. Good, she says, although I can't hear the difference. What kind of sandwich? Is there meat? Is there meat on that sandwich? Mrs. Reed, I'm a vegetarian. Gator. She frowns. Salami. Good, good. Now, put it all together. The, the snake eats the salami sandwich. <laughs> Very good, she says. The school psychologist is an undergrad from Fairleigh Dickinson University. Fairly ridiculous. With love beads and a beard like Allen Ginsberg's. I think I'm his senior project. His name is Barlow, and he's into transactional therapy, which means I spend our sessions shifting between two different... Uh, are you claiming that metal, you said metal, whose entire presentation came from the gay club scene? Is that true? From chairs are and having sure? a conversation. So the entire presentation of the gay scene came from, or sorry, from the metal scene came from the gay scene? With myself. In one chair, I'm the good boy. Really? And in the other one, I'm the dog boy. 
Carlo has a clipboard and a ponytail, and, and as we speak, he ultimately tugs at his hair and takes notes. Hey, thanks notes. for the uh, host, Sergeant Dingo. How do you feel Appreciate about that. mother? I, I, should, I, should, I, I should answer as the good boy? Yeah, yeah, you're the good boy. Um, Everybody subs okay. Sergeant Dingo. He writes that down. What would the dog boy say? Be the dog boy. And he points at the other Get two. Off. My education to becoming a man involves scenes that would play well in a Jeff Stryker video. <laughs> Tough guys stand over me in the weight room and say, push it, faggot. Older men want me as their dog. Even, even, even women want Protesters disrupt CBS Evening News with Dan Rather on, okay. This dude apparently was complaining about <clears throat> the AIDS crisis, so-called, at one point. Wait, I'll keep him. I'll keep his yap going. Actually, we'll assert this. Bag their tongues at me. I moved to the other chair. Uh, uh, I'm a dog boy now. Barlow smiles. Welcome, dog boy. <laughs> Tell me about your mother. I lean forward because I have this idea that a dog boy would probably lean forward. <laughs> well, uh, she's okay. <laughs> He's disappointed, but our time's up. I head to the guidance department to see the football coach. Reaching him means walking through the mall, a huge central hallway connecting the old and new sides of the building where everyone hangs out. It's got the cafeteria on one side and the library on the other, and the walls are lined with students in their cliques, jocks, cheerleaders, and brains. And I have to walk through the mall like six times a day. Everybody does, and, and each group calls me a fag as I walk past. Greasers, fag, freaks, faggity fag. Yo, a based. A Based? <laughs> Based Dally, dude? Based Soda Pop? Let's see. Okay, so apparently these guys, and or this guy, and his guys disrupted some Dan Rather newscast. A Scud missile eludes the U.S. Patriot missiles defending Tel Aviv. Its warhead kills some, inflicts scores of other casualties, and heavy damage in a residential neighborhood. New fears now that an Israeli retaliation against... Oh, <laughs> CBS Evening News. Thank you for reporting. News. Good evening. Life aids, not Arabs. We're going to take a break news. for a commercial just Life now. <laughs> was that the dude? <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I think that was him. Wait, so they caught it. We're sorry about that. <laughs> Had uh, a bit of an eruption here in the broadcast. An We're eruption. Going to take right from fabulous. The Saddam Hussein has cracked a U.S.-operated defensive shield and has struck his heaviest blow against Israel so far in the Six-Day-Old War. Who cares? The Israeli ambassador to the United States... I love how we're seeing chunks of the Israeli influence on our wars, like, right, even on this, like, gay, tonight, you know, gay AIDS sort of interruption. ...that several people were killed, many wounded, when a Scud missile slipped through a ring of fire from U.S. Patriot missiles and tore into an apartment house in Tel Aviv. The new well, attack even, hey, oh no, the pressure. we better, you know, <laughs> we better defend them obsessively and compulsively. Do you see any more of the interruption, to strike though? back against Iraq and widen the war. Hmm. Tom Fenton. I think this is, like, from the same clip. Zauer <clears throat> and the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Watch. Is the CBS Evening News. Dan Rather reporting. Good evening. We're going to take a break for a commercial. That might be the same dude. I think that's him. AV yeah. nerds, I'm an object of derision, even to the <laughs> AV nerds. Fag. You are an object of derision by design, like on purpose. That's sort of the, the, the horror that we're looking at for here. whom I have contempt. <laughs> Dearly, fag. The jocks. Fag. Staged, Staged. yeah, Don't definitely. Don't be so mean to the fag. <laughs> Brains. I wonder how come he's such a fag. <laughs> The football coach slash guidance counselor is a compact, cheerful guy with, a, with his shirt sleeves rolled up above his biceps and a bristly mustache. He Ugh. bangs me on the shoulder and says, how's it hanging? Is he asking me about my testicles? <laughs> creepy, dude. Unbelievably creepy. Uh, so, he, of course, you know, he's a professor at Queens. Queens, of course. He has to inject the anti hate stuff, so we got that. We got that archive. Why is white America so violent? What is wrong with the white family that it raises angry, violent children? Why are so many young white men armed and dangerous? Oh uh, boy, thirteen fifty, yada yada yada, FBI.gov, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We don't even need to go over that because they're lying. I mean, they know again in, in some compartment of their mind, they already know that they're full of shit and they're lying. Same thing, like. 
when they try to talk up like hashtag bleak excellence, they know they're lying. They know they're just using it, right? They're, they're using it for political gain or monetary gain of some sort. Um, they're sketch. They're very sketchy. But you know, I, I hate the fact that he's a masker. Like that's just so appropriate. You know, what's this gay bashing? It's not an Olympic sport. Damn. Just damn. Is that what makes him a man? <laughs> in health class, which is taught by the gym teacher who also runs the weight room, I learned what makes you a gay man. A gay man is someone in diapers. <laughs> Homosexuals, the teacher says, <laughs> are people who, because of the yeah, abnormality too. of their anus, like to put stuff up in there. <laughs> It wears out their sphincter by the time they're 20, after which they gotta wear diapers because they got the constant runs. Where's the lie? And I'm like, are you kidding? Put something in my anus? Oh my god! I, I, I mean, I know I walk funny, but am I gonna have to wear diapers? The thing is, I... These people think that prolapsed anuses and having to wear a diaper by the time you're 30 because you were kicking it at the bathhouse, like, they think that's funny. I mean, they probably don't think it's funny for their kids. They think it's funny for your kids. And they think it's funny that they're pushing this into educational spaces on your dime and that there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> the 